Wiring diagram. Identification. Let's do all four wires. Zero. Zero. Zero, zero. No idea what those are yet. Agree? Yeah. One of those two is my ground. One of those two is a signal wire, the one without bias. What's this one? Looks like the 5 volt ref. Let's check one more. That one's 4.87. Hmm. That's got to be the signal with the bias, TPS2. That's my reference. You understand how I labeled those? Just, uh, all I'm, this is a 2012 Navigator. I don't know anything about this car, but I know I unplug it. I take those readings. I was able to identify all of my wires without a diagram. Circuit design. Learn it. This is a good lesson for that. Okay, so you agree that the 4.87 is being dropped by the internal impedance of my meter. My meter's having some effect on that, isn't it? It's pulling it down. That's how I know that's my signal wire. That's not the reference. Cool, we got our circuit identified. So in, I even pulled the scan swap so you could see it. Remember, we had five, right? Max is five. This was at five volts until I connected my meter. What, what happened the moment I connected my meter on TPS2? It dropped. Why? From my meter. My meter had the effect on that circuit. Now, we're not dealing with TPS1 yet. I still have question marks here. You guys understand that? All right. No bias. Very good. We're back to where we were with my Silverado. What, what do we got to do? Let's identify which of these two. So that's what we're doing. Our focus on the next part. Which of these two is what? Because we already know where reference in TPS2 is. Yeah, Caleb. Why isn't the impedance of your meter messing with the reference signal? Ah, it's a good question. All right, so the reference, a rate, and I didn't cover this. It's a great question. What a regulator will do. You need to understand this is for an alternator as well. We have a 12 volt feed into a regulator and it has a ground and it has a five volt output. The output of this will be highly dependent on current flow. And it, it, it's not constant. Um, we're, we're gonna find, let me just jump down to the picture. Check out the drop. When I did the amperage measurement on this one, Look at the drop on the regulator. So it went from five volts down to 1.12, back up to 4.8. So what does a regulator do when it has more current flow? It senses the drop and produces more current flow to bring the voltage back up. So to answer your question, Caleb, on why my meter is not dropping the reference is because the second I put my meter in there, it's additional current flow. The regulator sees it, sees a momentary drop, and brings a voltage back up. That's what a regulator does. Make sense? Cool? And uh, the reference circuit goes through a resistor, so that's, uh, that resistor is going to cause your drop. Good question. All right, so identifying these next two wires. I, I want to identify these two wires, guys. You with me? Okay, how do we do that? So I just moved my, my meter. Watch what I do. Watch the scale. Watch this dial right here in the next picture. What, what am I doing? Go to ohms. I already know. One of those two's got to be my sensor ground. The other one's got to be my signal circuit. Am I going to hurt anything with my ohm meter? No, I'm not going to hurt anything. The one to the right reads zero ohms. My meter's connected to ground already. To do voltage measurements, which I was on, I'm on voltage, my meter's connected to ground. So when I go to the sensor ground, makes sense the sensor ground would be the same as battery ground. That's my sensor ground. What's this one that's reading 253 million ohms? Sorry, 253,000 ohms. That's on an M ohm scale. That's my signal circuit. That's TPS1. Cool? Pay attention. This one's really important. If, if I can... If I can have you snap out of your fog, if you're in it for a second, this one's super important. If you're going to do integrity testing, sometimes the data will not update. Even though I'm making changes, can you see that I'm making changes with my potentiometer? Why is the manifold vacuum, which is based off the map voltage, why is that not changing? Because the car's not running and the engine computer's not looking at the map sensor. Even though the signal voltage is changing, it's not looking at that manifold vacuum because it knows the car is not running. It's not going to update. How do I get that to update? Crank it over. What do we see here? RPM. What happened? I, I had the map set, my pot fixed at 3.9, right? And this last image, 3.9. So this is an extension. No change. To get it to change, I cranked it over. What did it do? 
it updated to a max of 2.6. So 2.6 uh, inches of vacuum, 3.9 volts is equivalent to 2.6 inches of vacuum. And what did the computer need for that to update? What is this? RPM. I just needed to crank it over or start the car. If the car doesn't run, crank it over. Guys, you have to remember that. You're doing an integrity test. Think about it. You're doing an integrity test and you don't have voltage available to you. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you only have in the data what the equivalent is. For example, an easy one for you guys. Engine coolant temperature voltage, engine coolant temperature degree Fahrenheit. On some cars, they won't give you the voltage. It might be the scan tool you're using. You only see degree Fahrenheit and you start doing some integrity testing, it may not update for you until you crank the engine over. Now typically coolant sensors wouldn't work that way, but you guys with me on the variable here. You're working on a sensing circuit. I was doing this on an oxygen sensor once and I could not get the computer to update the voltage on the O2 on the scan tool and it wouldn't until I cranked the engine over. That's when I learned this. Need an RPM signal for some of these. Super important. Super important. You can't do integrity testing without considering that.